minus 10, 9, 8, 7, ignition, launch, launch. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Smooth sailing, baby. When he began to start sketching out the ideas for Fear of a Black Planet, that whole process was a whole world that was waiting for us to repeat. It takes the nations of millions to hold us back. People expected that Fear of a Black Planet would follow that up. In baseball speak, if It Takes a Nation was a Nolan Ryan, a 100-mile fastball, the whole key in Fear of a Black Planet was throwing a hanging curve to catch everybody off tempo. <laughs> When it comes to sort of reminiscing about graphics, we're just now getting to that point where people understand that that has as much significance as the music itself. At the time, Public Enemy was one of those bands that understood the power of a graphic and the power of a good logo. Coming up with the concept for the cover is myself and Hank Shockley looked at rock bands in the mid 80s when Hank was actually manager of a record store. Hank turned me on to the artwork of Iron Maiden. He says, yo, Chuck, this is pretty dope right here. Check this out. And Hank would say, look, they're keeping it theme. They got the same logo. That's kind of dope. I'm a fan of movie posters and illustrations, but one thing that struck me in 1977, Star Wars, when it first came out, I thought it was kind of hokey for little kids or whatever. And to this day, I haven't watched one Star Wars flick ever. Star Wars posted. The artwork blew me away. I couldn't get it out of my system. Chuck D was always very hands-on with his artwork, so he would come in most of the time off hours because I think that's when parking was a little bit easier to find on the street. He knew exactly what he wanted, and it was Steve and I's job to figure out how to execute it. We wanted this sort of Star Wars type effect so we had to hire an illustrator and we stumbled upon this guy named B.E. Johnson who did illustrations for NASA and so he understood all about planets and space and stars and nebulae and all of it we called him up and we had a conversation about working on this record and he had no idea who Public Enemy was and you know needless to say he was not excited he worked for NASA <laughs> We just said, look, go outside. If you see any kids in your neighborhood, ask them who Public Enemy is. And sure enough, he did that. And he came back and he said, I'll take the job. I remember hearing that when he got the sketch from me, which was uh, the Black Planet with the Public Enemy logo, kind of like part of its, its terrain, its atmosphere. He said, this is, <laughs> this is scientifically impossible. And I was like, well, make it happen anyway. The planet has the public enemy logo burning in fire and just wanted something that feels like the earth was really being overpowered by this black planet. You look at that public enemy target, it's always ever present on all of their covers. And that's what we wanted. And all of that green nebula in the bottom. For us, the green just meant a lot. Thinking about red, black, and green, we wanted something that really sort of spoke to African liberation. And this was a group that, at the time, might have seemed radical, but really what they were talking about was racial injustice and social equality. When I saw the painting by B.E. Johnson, I was blown away. It came out better than I ever could have expected. As a matter of fact, when I saw it, I said, you could take the words off of it, the type off of it, and this is something that's going to stand the test of time. The theme was the counterattack on world supremacy. We would try to get the point over that. The world of white supremacy and its rules will be eclipsed by this theory that's inside the record. 
I thought that world supremacy, world could replace white. The, the judges and the so-called record police at that time, they were so scared. They were looking to see if there was any kind of anti-lyrics on there or whatever. And it probably was the most searched, scoured, and examined album before it ever came out, ever. I was very clear to, on the type, so the counterattack on world supremacy. And at the end of the day, you get it. Even at the beginning of the day, you get it. Now, all of those things are buzzwords, but back even in the 90s, this was something that people weren't paying a lot of attention to. And for Public Enemy to make a cover that addressed those things was huge, and I knew it in the moment. The fact that B.E. Johnson knew nothing about the music, that he thought it was scientifically impossible, that he complied and said, listen, I'm, I'm gonna do this thing, that, that blew me away typography and the graphic work by Say Adams and Stephen Carr for the drawing board. You had myself and Hank, what we would do at PE. You had triple team to throw that cover art into the end zone. Bring the noise, peace. But the bullets being born, but don't strike me. There's nothing that the black makers use to earn. Burn Hollywood, burn. Now we're considering you for a part in our new production. 